Long before a camera crew from the Discovery Channel documented a mustached father screaming at his son in Orange County, California, motorcyclists have been modifying their stock motorcycles to improve performance, become more capable off-road, or look more stylish. These motorcycles fell into different categories based on their intended uses, each with their own distinct style and common modifications. If you ride motorcycles and own a Crosley record player, you're probably familiar with styles like cafe racers or scramblers. Both styles are still popular today as motorcycle manufacturers produce retro style bikes akin to their historic lineage. Even if you don't ride motorcycles, you probably know what a chopper is. Choppers are one of the most ubiquitous styles of motorcycles in American popular culture. They are custom motorcycles with modified frames, raked out forks, and ever bizarre stylistic choices you could imagine. Long before the chopper, there was the bobber. The lawful good to the chopper's chaotic evil, the bobber was the OG style of custom motorcycles and has been so influential, there are still bobber style motorcycles available from the factory today. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Everything you need to know about bobber motorcycles. If you like motorcycles, memes, oxygen, humor, and the Dewey Decimal System, maybe take a moment to click the notification bell so you stay up to date on all the new videos. Today's video is brought to you by Manscaped. We're gonna to talk to you more about them later in the show. So bobber motorcycles, that's what we're talking about here today. You've probably seen some bobber style models available from American motorcycle manufacturers like Indian and Harley Davidson, but what makes a motorcycle a bobber and where does the style originate from? Bobbers were originally called Bob Johns until the late 90s. Yeah, kind of cringy. It sounds like some sort of weird sex move or something, but that moniker is reflective of the original style in the way that the bobber doesn't. Bob job refers to the act of bobbing or cutting down a motorcycle that is really the fundamental idea of the style to remove anything that's excessive or unnecessary to reduce weight and to increase performance. Just before the first Bob job came to completion, I mm, don't like the way that sounds. Just before the incarnation of the bobber motorcycle, there was the cut down. Not to be confused with the badass custom mopeds of the European scooter scene of the 70s and 80s, which I'm sure you're familiar with. The cut down was a style of custom motorcycle based off the Harley Davidson J series of the late 1920s. These bikes had their frames cut down to shorten the wheelbase for better handling and to reduce weight. Their fenders were either eliminated or shortened and any component unnecessary to the basic function of the motorcycle was removed. If you look at a cut down J-Series Harley and squint your eyes, it kind of looks like a sportster probably makes about the same amount of power too. By the 1930s, Indian and Harley Davidson were making similar cut down style simplified motorcycles for the AMA race bikes. Enthusiasts at home began doing the same thing to their personal bikes and the Bob Job, that is the last time I'm saying it, I promise, had officially made its way into the motorcycling nomenclature. Emulating the AMA C-Class motorcycle, Bobbers had become a fairly popular style of bike as the prehistoric street Rossies of the day wanted their motorcycles to be able to replicate what racers could do on the track. They followed the similar archetype of simplifying and stripping down their motorcycles. A bobber of the times would typically have the front fender removed and the rear fender either cut down, short, or removed entirely. They would typically have a small solo seat without any passenger accommodations and any unnecessary plastic, side panels, and electronics would be done away with as well. It wouldn't be uncommon for a bobber to have some custom exhaust work wrapped in heat tape instead of guards or shields. In the early years of bobbers, they didn't have the over-the-top cosmetic choices and typically maintained factors paint or used raw or unpainted metal for any of the custom fabbed parts. And once you're finished cutting down your bobber in the garage, why don't you take some time for a bob job in the bathroom and cut down that forest in your nether regions? I lied, I said it again. For that degree of custom fabrication, you're going to need some heavy machinery. Luckily, Manscaped has you covered with the Lawnmower 4.0. The Lawnmower 4.0 is Manscaped's premier below the waist trimmer. It has skin safe ceramic blades and multiple guard sizes to accommodate any style you're going for. It is waterproof, charges wirelessly, and even has an LED spotlight for the shadow puppets on the bathroom wall. Hey, this one looks like an anteater. Best of all, if you click the link below, you will receive 20% off and free shipping on your order. Manscaped support us, so you support them and they can continue supporting us. See how it works? Again, Use the link down below and get 20% off your order in free shipping. Your girlfriend, boyfriend, urologist, or furry companion will thank you. Thank you for the support, Manscaped. Now back to the show. After World War II, Bobber Saw Motorcycles started seeing the same emphasis on cosmetic and stylistic modifications that were becoming popular in the hot rod scene of the time. Bikes would get custom paint jobs and chrome plating. One of the pioneers of this customization was none other than the racist alcoholic scumbag Kenny Von Dutch Howard. 
Yeah, namesake of the Von Dutch clothing brand worn by Ashton Kutcher and Paris Hilton and the glory days of the Y2K fashion. Look it up. Anyway, he and other people in this scene started pinstriping their motorcycles and emphasis on the flashy cosmetic changes led way to the chopper style that became popular in the 60s today. Choppers varied from bobbers in that they were typically designed for extreme stylistic choices like modified frame geometry, raked out forks, and every sort of bizarre handlebar configuration you could think of. No front brakes, suicide clutches, and peanut gas tanks and $5,000 paint jobs. Yeah, you get the idea. Well, bobbers waned in popularity in that time, and it wasn't until the late 90s that the style saw a resurgence and motorcycle manufacturers began taking notice. Any era that has faced great turmoil and social angst has had big sweeping shifts in the cultural landscape. The horrors of World War I and trench warfare led to Dadaism. 9-11 and the War on Terror gave us American Idiot by Green Day, and the meme wars of 2010 and the Battle of the Big Chungus led to a resurgence in heritage style motorcycles. Motorcycle manufacturers must know that younger riders long for days past as cafe racers, scramblers, and bobblers are rivaling sport bikes on the dealership floor. Okay, so we know retro style bikes, bobbers specifically, are back in fashion, but what does a modern bobber look like rolling out of a factory? Obviously, it will have a fit and finish you would not expect from a bike built with hand tools in someone's 1940s garage. There's no raw sheets of sheet metal or heat tape on the exhaust, but it will have the same overall profile and aesthetic of the original bobber, short fender, solo seat, and stripped down aesthetics. Let's take a look at some modern bobber style motorcycles available to be purchased today. One of the most popular bobber motorcycles is the Indian Scout Bobber. This motorcycle shares the same 1113cc liquid cooled V-twin power plant as the normal Scout model, but with a more stripped down aggressive styling. It makes 100 horsepower and 72 foot pounds of torgos while weighing in at 553 pounds. It is definitely one of the most edgier Scout models with a bobbed rear fender, low handlebars, and a headlight cowl. It has blacked out components, bar end mirrors, and a solo seat. The Scout Bobber sits a bit lower than the standard model, giving it that aggressive bulldog stance with the chunky front tire and the low center of gravity. Another option from Indian that is more catered towards the new riders is the Indian Scout Bobber 60. This motorcycle is nearly identical to the normal Bobber, but with a smaller 1000cc engine and a 5-speed transmission. Indian has been making the Scout intermittently since the 1920s, so they're definitely a staple for heritage-inspired motorcycles. Harley-Davidson is still in business because they actually get a nickel every time someone says heritage as a way of describing a motorcycle. I'm serious, it's actually part of their licensing program. Just kidding, it's actually because they sell wallets. Harley and Indian were right at the forefront of the bobber motorcycle subculture in the 1930s, so it stands to reason that they both still sell motorcycles that pay homage to those early days of bob jobs in the truck stop bathroom. The Harley Davidson Street Bob hails from Milwaukee and has all the trappings of a bobber motorcycle. It has a really stripped down aesthetic with chopped fender a solo seat minus the weird passenger pillion that I don't think anyone should be subjected to sit on, and mini ape handlebars. It also has a blacked out components which seem to be a common trait for the modern bobber. Nothing says I'm super badass like having a blacked out motorcycle. The street bob has an 1114 cubic inch V-twin which is, one second, calculating 1868 cc's. I think it makes the engineers at Harley Davidson are trying to tell us something with that big ol' engine. Anyways, it makes 100 horsepower and a whopping 119 foot-pounds of Torgos while weighing in here 655 pounds. I guess you don't have to be concerned with weight reduction when building a bobber in the 21st century when engines make more than 20 horsepower. An interesting bobber motorcycle made today is the Triumph Bonneville bobber. The Bonneville is renowned as one of the coolest cafe bike styles available as it's still reminiscent of the original British twins of the 1960s, so it is interesting that they outfitted in the bobber styling. Clearly a cash grab. The Bonneville bobber looks the most custom out of the modern bobbers and is a wide 16-inch wire-spoked wheel wheels with fat tires and a floating solo seat with a hidden mono shock giving you the illusion of a hardtail motorcycle. It even has a two into two exhaust with one muffler on each side of the bike which is a pretty retro look. The bike has a 1200cc high torque parallel twin that makes 77 horsepower and 78 foot pounds of torque while weighing 553 pounds. Bonneville Bobber has features that remind you it's a modern motorcycle despite its old school aesthetics like Showa front suspension, Brembo brakes, ABS, and the switchable rider modes. This is a pretty cool bike that almost feels like a hybridization of a couple styles of motorcycles and is one of the more unique retro bikes available fresh from the factory. Another oddball European bike is the Moto Guzzi V9 Bobber. This bike is also really an amalgamation of a few different styles of motorcycle that all come together to be an old school but futuristic 
kooky bike. It has a long flat seat and flat handlebars like a Cafe Racer or Scrambler and the same big chunky tires that have become so popular on bobber style motorcycles today. What makes this bike interesting is its 853cc air-cooled transverse V-twin engine excitedly jutting out latitudinally from the frame. This little sucker makes 55 horsepower and 46 foot-pounds of torque. Torginos. V9 Bobber weighs in at just 463 pounds, which makes it pretty light for the retro Bobber class. It has a six-speed transmission, a single Brembo brake caliper in the front and rear, and ABS and traction control. It isn't going to be the most advanced or high-performing motorcycle, but the V9 Bobber is a cool entry for someone who wants a bike unlike anything else on the road. The last honorable mention for modern bobbers is the Honda Rebel line. What is likely one of the most popular motorcycles on our list, the current iteration of the Rebel takes a lot of inspiration from bobbers of years past. They are stripped down bikes with blacked out parks that solo seat and a high gas tank. Kind of sounds like a bobber. Available in three different displacement, the Rebel is probably the most accessible bobber available. The Rebel 300, 500, and 1100 all share similar looks while gaining power and features as you go up the model line. We've got plenty of content dedicated on the Rebel 11 1100 if you'd like to go back and see us goofing around with that bike in earlier videos. Alas, that brings us to the conclusion of our little trip down memory lane. We learned about the origin of the bobber, took a brief look at the wretched chopper lifestyle that came afterward, made some sexual innuendos, and ultimately checked out what some modern motorcycle bobbers look like today. If you enjoyed what you saw and have yet to subscribe, give it a shot and click the notification bell to stay up to date on all the latest videos. Fact. The Empire State Building generates more revenue from its observation decks than from its 85 floors of office space. That's crazy. In 2014, while the building's two observation decks generated $111 million, 40% of revenue, its office space leases just netted $104 million, 37% of revenue. Goodbye.